Hi everyone, I'm Chris O'Neill from So The Distance and today I'm going to show you how to upcycle this pillow that I found at a thrift store while I was in Vermont. Isn't it cool? I couldn't leave it there. It was only two dollars. Even though I didn't really need a pillow like this, it doesn't really go with my decor, I thought it would make a great table topper. I was also thinking about the eclipse and I thought this really gives an eclipse vibe to it and it would also be great for like New Year's, that time of year. I am going to show you how I'm going to take this pillow and change it into a table topper and I'll give you some ideas on things that you can do to upgrade or to rescue or whatever anything you find at thrift shops or even things that you have at home so we're going to take it apart and see how we can make it usable now one thing i did notice on this it has a zipper closure which i love that i want to learn to make that so i also can use this as a tutorial for myself also there's a place where there's some paint that was splattered on it so we'll take care of that too but I just, I wanna get started on this, so let's do it. So I have the pillow here, and the first thing I'm gonna do is take the pillow form out of the pillow. Here's the pillow form. It is surprisingly clean. I don't think this pillow was ever used. Anyway, we can use this for a different project, right? So I'm gonna set that aside. So I have the shell here, and I'm gonna turn it inside out so I can see what we're working with. And let's see. Oh, it's very nice. So it looks like the maker lined it with some muslin, but there's no quilting in this and I definitely wanna add some quilting. So I'm gonna start by unsewing <laughs> with my seam ripper and going around this entire thing so I can just get the quilt top to get started. Okay, so I have it all unsewn <laughs> and I'm gonna take this backing off that was on the pillow front the back of the pillow front. And when I looked at the back, I was kind of surprised at some of the threads and stuff I see. So we're gonna clean that up too. Also, some of the seam allowances are giant, which I'm not sure what the maker did with that, but that's okay. Other than that, I mean, it's a nice back. They have everything pressed correctly, you know, so it all nests together nicely and everything. But just giving it a good cleanup, I think is gonna help with the construction or the quilting, I guess, of this. So I'm gonna give it a good press, clean it up, snip some, snip, snip some threads <laughs> and cut some of those dog ears and all that stuff. And then we'll sandwich it and quilt it. Okay, so now that I have it all cleaned up and I did trim away some of the seam allowance, like the black was shadowing through, you can see that here in the picture. It was just shadowing through and I needed to make sure that I got that cleaned up because I didn't want it to shadow through when I was quilting it. The other thing I noticed, and maybe this is why the maker made it into a pillow, is it's not straight. Now it's kind of hard to see on camera, but I'm gonna do my best to straighten it up so it's as straight as possible, but it is a little wonky. Something interesting that the maker did that we can learn, again, from the quilters, is the maker didn't make sure that those points were exactly on, they're floated, because I think the maker struggled to make this one just from some of the clues on the back. And this is a really difficult block. I would never attempt this. <laughs> so uh, who am I to say? It's good or bad, right? I'm not saying that at all, I'm just saying there's some concerns that we can address when we finish this up to a table topper. And I was thinking you could make a cute tote bag too out of it. Wouldn't it make a cute tote bag? All right, I am going to square this up as best as I possibly can and I'm gonna show you how I do it. Okay, another change of plans. So when you're making something like this or taking anything and upcycling it, you have to kind of think on your feet a little bit and always be very flexible to change your plans, which is what I'm going to do now. I originally was gonna trim this up first, but I decided I'm going to quilt it first. The reason I wanted to trim it up first was because I wanted to save this border, but the more I got to thinking about it, I don't think I do want to save this border. I think that I'm just gonna put a black binding on this instead. One of the reasons is because there is some of that paint that I cannot get off on this, it's splattered on it. And also it's gonna help me, I think, with squaring it up. Maybe not, maybe I'll uh, get, learn a valuable lesson, but I don't think so, I think it's gonna be great. So I'm gonna sandwich this and quilt it. Now to quilt it, I'm just doing straight line stitching. I'm not doing anything fancy. Actually, let's look at this. All right, I reevaluated yet again. <laughs> it's just, it's a work in progress. I'm not gonna do straight line stitching. And the reason I'm not is because it will accentuate the uneven legs of the star. And I don't want to do that. So I think I'm gonna do diagonal, maybe a little dense, or I'll do like a lattice where it crisscrosses. Hmm, I'm not sure. But either way, I'm gonna sandwich it and get it ready to quilt. 
Okay, so I have this all sandwiched. I have my backing piece here, and it's just a solid. If it were a print, I'd make sure that the print was facing down. I have my batting, and then I sandwich this on top. And the more I thought about this, I think what I'm gonna do is just shadow quilt these stars on each layer. And I'm gonna use a gray thread. I kinda want it to blend in. I think that's gonna give me the best results. I'm not stitching in the ditch, because again, I don't wanna accentuate any issues that this block has. But if I stitch in the neighborhood, get my seam ripper so I can show you, right in here and just shadow this, I think that will be the best result. I'm gonna use gray thread to do that. I'm gonna start in the middle and just line this up. And actually I'm gonna pick a point that's kinda on. And then I'm just going to use my walking foot right here. This is my guide of where the placement is for stitching. And I'm gonna to have to move it up a little bit because of that point. And I'm gonna increase my stitch length to about 3.2. And I'm gonna pull up my thread so I can bury it. So I'm pulling that up. All right, after several tries, I did get both threads up and I'm going to start stitching. Okay, so I'm back to the beginning where I started. So I have two options. I can go just right up to the next level and keep going, or I can clip my threads, bury them, and start the next section. I don't think you're gonna notice it if I go up it, but you know what, I'm not going to. I'm gonna just pull up my threads, pull them away. I'll just bury them with a needle and thread on the front and the back. Okay, I'm making yet another change. <laughs> and this is just real time. I'm just going with the flow. Once I pulled it out and started looking at it, I realized because I'm trying to make sure it looks nice and square, even though it's not, that this star, it's gonna look wonky on the back because of the black backing. Although I like the way it looks, as I build it out, it's going to really look bad. So I'm gonna rip that out. And then I'm going to replace the backing with this backing. This is just going to give it a more blended feel and it's not going to be as noticeable when you see the quilting all done on the back. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to keep quilting and I'll meet you back here for finishing it. Okay, it's all finished, all quilted. Not finished, quilted. So you can see I did go into the black when I was uh, just doing that quilting on it. That's okay, we're gonna trim that up. Not a big deal. I love the texture, I love how it looks. It just elevated a little bit. We're gonna trim it up and make it as square as possible for the table topper. Let's do it. So this can be tricky. The important thing you wanna remember is you want it to look square, but you can see it's tough to do. So you kind of have to just fudge it a little and move it around till it's a at a spot that you kind of like. You could go by the middle, which actually, let's see if we did that. Hmm, that's gonna really make things wonky. So I'm not, I'm gonna split the difference and really just play around with it. For me, the important part is to get this corner square because it's gonna make my binding process easier. So you can see how these are not straight. So if I move this up here, you can see that these lines do not line up. And that's why we're fudging it a little bit. I think I like that. So I'm gonna cut these two sides, then I'm gonna turn it and keep lining it up that way until it's a spot that I like. So I know that's a square edge. So I'm just gonna turn it. And now I'm gonna line this up with this edge and then make some decisions. Yeah, it's really wonky. Slide that over just a smidge. Okay. It's looking good, it's looking good. I did like this black border, but for finishing it the way I want to, it just wasn't gonna work because it would just accentuate that issues that we were having here. All right, I'm gonna turn it again. And let's see, I might line it up on the mat a little bit. Use all the tools I have, right? I'm gonna trim that away, just to get that out of the way. And we'll do our last squaring up. Oh my goodness, look at that. Look how nice. Oh, I love it. I love it. All right, so I'm gonna baste around the edge and then I'm going to get to preparing a binding and binding this. Okay, so I have my one and a quarter inch strips here ready to go. I'm just gonna take two of them. I'm going to 
place them on top of each other like that. And then I, I like to overlap them about a quarter of an inch. That's the way I like to do it. And I can kind of eyeball it. If you need to measure, that's fine too. And I'm just gonna line that up. And I'm using my cluck cluck sew tape, sort of. <laughs> I have it, it's not completely to the edge of that I should be, but it's not. I'm just gonna eyeball it and sew. And then I'm gonna take the other end, line up the next piece the same way and stitch it and just keep going. And I like to do this just because it reduces the bulk at the seams. It's the way I learned. I know you can just butt them up right after one another, but for me, this works and it's what I know. Okay, now that I have this all done, I am going to just check it, which it looks pretty good. Maybe be a little off, that's okay. I'm going to trim it and then I'll take it to the iron and press the seam here open. And I'm gonna do that on all of the pieces. Okay, now that my binding is made, I'm gonna start binding it. Notice I did not do a double fold binding like some people do. I, this is a small project and it's not gonna get anywhere, you know, as far as up against your face or anything like that or folded on a bed. So you don't need that thickness and it will just add to the bulk in my opinion. And all I'm gonna do is line this up. I'm going to move my foot over so I get my quarter inch, which is right there. And I'm gonna start sewing. And I don't backstitch when I start, so I just go. When I get down to my corner, I take a ruler, I'm gonna measure a quarter of an inch and mark it. Now my presser foot has a quarter inch thingy on it, so I know where it's at, but this is how I would do it if I didn't have that. And that actually looks a little wide, let me see. Yeah, it's more than a quarter, let's do that again. All right. And I'm gonna stop at that quarter inch mark, making sure my needle's in at that spot. We have to go slow. Turn it so it's at a 45 degree angle and just sew off the edge. You're going to fold it back upon itself like this at an angle, kind of like you're wrapping a present. And I just finger press that and then flip this over and finger press it again. I also grab a clip, let me do that and make sure it's out of my way. So I'll put it right here, turn this, and start sewing at the edge. And just keep going. When I get to the next corner, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Fold it back, finger press, fold it again, grab that clip clip on and keep going. I'm gonna do that all the way around until we get to the last side and then I'll show you what we do. All right, now that we're on the last side, I'm gonna sew down. And you know what? I don't like that we're coming up on this join. So what I'm gonna do is just open this up more, bring this down a little bit more. That's why I don't backstitch here. Some people backstitch here, but I'm always playing with this side so it makes it just easy to rip it out. Okay, now this is the way I bind and it's not the way everybody binds. Let me adjust the camera first. So figure out your own way of doing it. Uh, there's no right or wrong way with quilting, I promise. Nobody's gonna come at you. All right, I get a lot of pins, okay? And I take one pin and I put it in here and then I measure this over half the width of this. So this is one and a quarter, so half is, oh gosh, I'm terrible. Half of one and a quarter would be, what's half of one and a quarter, honey? Five eighths, okay, five eighths. So one, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna line that up with that pin, that five eighths mark, and mark it. So let me show you that again, because I got distracted trying to figure out math. Not very good at math. So I put a pin in here. I'm making sure that it's straightish and that it's perpendicular to the side. I'm gonna lay my binding strip on that and we know it is 5 eighths is half of the width and I'm gonna mark that really well. And then I'm gonna take this side and measure over 5 eighths from that pin. One, two, three, four, five and mark it. Okay, I'm gonna take my scissors and cut on that line. And it's hard probably to see, but it's right there. And I need a manicure, so please don't mind my 
scraggly hands. I had to cancel my manicure this week, so <laughs> I didn't get it. So I'm gonna go straightish. Put them aside. I can take this pin out. We're gonna use it in a minute. I'm gonna take this side, flip it like this, and then I'm gonna take this side, and I'm gonna match these up just like that. Just like that. So I just crisscrossed them. I'm making sure right sides are together. And now I pin the heck out of this. Just go nuts because you want this nailed down. Not pretty, but it works. And then I'll take a pin or two and go this way. And then I'll take this guy out because we're gonna stitch this angle right here. And I'm just gonna go to the machine. It's nice and solid because it's not going anywhere. And start stitching. Oh, I gotta move my needle back to the center. There we go. That's important. <laughs> and just so. Don't sew over any pins. Just like that. Now before I cut anything or anything else, I'm gonna check it. And it is right. I've done this so many times. <laughs> That is absolutely right. So I'm gonna to go to my iron, I'm gonna trim this away, and then I'm gonna press it. You can see it doesn't completely line up. That's just because this, this fabric wasn't cut straight <laughs> when the maker made it. So it's been stretching a little bit. It's been a little bit of a pain, but I'm just gonna ease that in. So that's not a big deal. Okay, I did that. I'm gonna move my needle over to that quarter inch again. I'm also gonna get rid of some of these pins because I don't want them going into my machine. And now I'm just stitching this down the rest of the way. Okay, it is ready to go. And our next step is simply to turn this over and then fold it in and then I hand stitch it onto the back, just like that, just with hand stitch. I don't press this or anything yet. I just fold it and fold it. So you flip this over, I'll show you this way. I fold it once and fold it again. And that's how I do it. And when you get to these corners, they're gonna fold right in, they miter right in, no problems. So you fold it just like a package and then you'll fold this one in and miter that. And then I just do a whip stitch around it by hand and I'll meet you back here once all done. It's all finished, look at how cute. Oh my goodness, I love it. There's the back. There's some threads on it, that's okay. I also forgot to take the basting stitches out. So I got a few things to do yet, but overall it's done. It could be a wall hanging, table topper, like I said, you could do anything with this. You could have even taken this top and made it into a big quilt, kept adding borders. Wouldn't that have been cool? Like a round robin style. I love this. It's a great way to commemorate the eclipse or even to use on New Year's just a cool table topper that I definitely will get some use out of where I wouldn't have gotten use out of that pillow even though the pillow was great and I got a pillow form which is I think brand new it, I don't think this pillow was ever used I also got a little mini tutorial <laughs> on how to put a zipper in a closure on the back because I can tear that apart and take some measurements and figure all that out too and what else I always oh, saved it from the landfill because it was in the clearance section I don't know, I just, I feel very good about this. I like upcycling things like this. I find this stuff all the time at thrift shops. If you wanna see anything else like this, a project like this, let me know. Cause I, I just love it. It would have also made a great project bag too. You could have done that too. All kinds of ideas. Let me know what you would have done. Would you have left it a pillow? Would you have made something like this? or done nothing and left it out at the thrift shop. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you take some time to sew. I'll see you real soon. Bye.